Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial. Today we're going to talk primarily about sound locking, but I also want to have a brief overview of some of the patch browser settings without drilling too deep into that subject. Sound locking, what's it all about? Basically, you can take any aspect of a preset sound, uh, the, the current patch that you're working on, and you can say, freeze that bit of the sound in place. And now when you go to choose new sounds, it's going to get kind of stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a sound that's got, we're going to start with an arpeggiator because they're the easiest things to, um, to identify. I'll have this one. Okay, so. So that's the full um, sequence. And now with that really distinct, what is it, 32 note sequence being played, I'm gonna freeze that in place. So every single sound I subsequently choose is gonna have that sequence played behind the basic sound. The way we do it is we go into our little lock symbol and we we select in this left hand column arpeggiator now the lock symbol turns blue to say that part of this preset has been sound locked now what we're going to do is choose a new sound so we'll choose this authentic sound just without the arpeggiator That's the basic sound, but we've carried a, carried across the arpeggiator from the first sound. Now this sound has a very nice filter setting to it. So we go into filter uh, sound lock again, and this time we lock the filters. Uh, those values will now get carried across onto the next uh, step that we take. So I'm going to pick. Uh, this sound now. So we've carried the arpeggiator from the first sound. The filter set settings, none of these filter settings have changed. They've been carried across from sound number two. Now, when we're messing around with this sound, we decide that we like that delay sound. So let's go into the effects. And here's our delay. We'll accentuate it a little bit. Okay, and now that we've got a delay sound that we like, we freeze the effects unit. And so we, we constantly have the opportunity to build and we're collecting this stuff. Every time we tick one of those ticks, we're basically saying freeze that part of the synth in place. I could deselect all of those options and it won't do anything at all to the sound because that's the current state of the preset. If I now move to a new preset, we'll lose everything. But for the time being, even though I've taken all of those locks off, that is the core sound of this preset as it stands right now. So if I go back in to sound lock, unfortunately, it doesn't hold this um, menu open, which I'm not a huge fan of. Reselect the three options that we previously had. Now let's go into kind of part two of the tutorial where we have a little bit of a browse around the browser. No pun intended, sadly. Right, okay, so here's our sound. Let's say we like that sound, we're a big fan of it, but we want to hear other things that are similar. I've got this fabulous option called sound match. If I select sound match, and then say match current selection. You see, it's got our, our preset here, match current selection. Now it returns this ordered list according to the number of attribute tags that match the current sound. And now I can start cursor down. That's, it, that's cool. Now, 
Now let's say each one of those auditions is a little bit too short. I want to have a little bit more of an opportunity, particularly because this is an arpeggio, to hear a little bit more of the sound. No problem at all. Go into settings, audition, auto play, note length. Two seconds. That's much better. And so now each time we pick a new sound, just get a little bit longer. You can also see that we can change our autoplay note. If let's say the song is in G and we're feeling particularly desperate to hear a G, now each time I select a new sound, I'll get that option. This um, autoplay power button here, by the way, corresponds to the little play symbol in the main browser. If I turn that on by selecting autoplay, then it's re-enabled over here. I can't imagine why you would ever want to turn your up and down arrow keys off, but you can over here. Category sensitive attributes is a nice one to know about though. As things stand, let's go back over to the attribute menu. You see it says category, type, genre, author. When I select any individual category, let's say synth mono, the options now change. We've got type, mood, genre. And when I choose keyboards, it switches to type model genre. So Omnisphere picks this stuff for us. And all of that is configured over here. If I turn that function off, now those menus never change. And it's entirely up to me to determine what I want my option settings to be. Now, can you see these little blue symbols, the um, two overlapping circles? These are your Boolean operators. So if I want to choose something that's both like funky and quirky, if I uh, left click on funk, can you see it's dark blue? Now if I, I'm going to press my control key down on my keyboard and click quirky. And what we're getting here is a list of um, options that are either of these things. This is an or search. So the entire thing is colored in. Well, that's not what I want. I wanted to do an and search both funky and quirky. The way we do that is to right click on funk and now it's in white with a blue highlight rectangle. Hold my control key down again and right click quirky. And can you see now the symbols changed? It's basically showing you only the intersection of the two circles. So this is an and search. So the options that are being displayed here are sounds that are both funky and quirky. And then we can choose that to not, which is all of the sounds that are neither funky nor quirky. And you can see the tiny little scroll bar because most of the sounds meet those criteria. Left click, throws all of that away, and we're back to our standard or search. Now, do you remember all that time ago, we did the sound lock um, values? They're still in there. So none of that's been thrown away. We've not lost our sound lock options. And there's still our arpeggiator sound with our two second preview. I'm going to go back to a one second preview. Let's say I like that as my new jumping point for the sound. Choose sound match. Find all the sounds that most closely match that sound. And then just start pressing the arrow key down. Find the sound that you want. Shut your browser down. There's our big delay and our filters and our arpeggio. Now, I've deliberately avoided some of the features of the patch browser, primarily because I don't use them. <laughs> um, I, I don't use projects. This is where you would collect sounds together. Um, if you're working on a project, you can add individual sounds to projects and categorize and tag them. Uh, within that context. I, I don't use them, but they are here. And you can also publish um, projects and that's how people are able to share sound banks with each other. But again, it's not a function that I use, so I don't want to pretend to be an expert in something that I don't use. I do quite often use this little info button just to give me a highlight of the presets and some explanation and description of what they are as I'm browsing.
I think that's really useful. And one final option that I'll show you that I also think is occasionally of value is this marked symbol. So the way this works is for me to be browsing sounds. If I shift click on a sound, it puts this little blue circle. That means that sound is now marked. So I'm somewhere else in my, my list and I'm doing something else. Shift click. And now I can sort by marked sounds and it collects all of those together. And I can alt click anywhere in the browser to remove all markers. So it's designed to be a transient thing, a temporary thing, to temporarily bookmark different sounds, collect them all together, and then you can do what you want. And once you've finished, throw it all away. I think that's really useful as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. I hope to see you for the next one. Thanks.